the doctors uh, just looked at me and said, well, you, you don't have any big hope, you should change your life. This is Simon Holvik. Last year he won what many claim to be the world's toughest ultramarathon. It's a treacherous trek that even the most elite runners can't finish. The Badwater 135 Ultra Marathon is an event considered to be the hardest endurance race in the world. And this shouldn't have been possible, because how can you win this extreme race in blazing hot Death Valley when you live and train here in cold Norway? and first started running at the age of 38. So I've traveled here to Stavanger to meet Simon and go for a run with him and I'm so curious to learn more about what made him become one of the best ultramarathoners in the world. And I'm sure there are plenty of things all of us can learn from him and his story. So let's go and meet up with him and I'm actually a bit nervous right now because he hasn't told me what kind of uh, run that he will bring me on. So I really don't hope that it is like a 100 mile uh, training run. Hi Z-Man. Hi there. Nice to meet you. Really nice to meet you. So you are ready to go for a run? <laughs> yeah, this is my neighborhood. So I'm living five meters that way. So this is my uh, bread and butter run. What kind of run are you taking us uh, on today? This is around uh, the island where I'm living, Hunvog, uh, so it's about 10 kilometers. It's really comforting to hear here. I was, <laughs> I was worried that you were going to say it's only like 100 miles. <laughs> <laughs> So this is a really beautiful area to live in and to go for runs in. Yeah, this is uh, perfect. The beautiful nature is uh, fresh air. Yeah, it makes you, uh, your mind uh, wandering and uh, no, it's perfect. I can imagine that you most of the time run uh, way further than 10 kilometers. Yeah, that's, that's true. But as a single dad, you have to split up your uh, runs. Yeah. So sometimes I do maybe uh, it's a seven, eight runs for one day. In one single day? Yeah, split into 10 kilometers, 15. Although running 10 kilometers today is just one of up to eight running sessions Simon does in a single training day. It wasn't always like that. Seven years ago, he was overweight and out of shape. And the reason he started running and eventually started running longer and longer distances was not to win big races. But it was my, my dad actually that got a heart attack uh, that started my running career. <laughs> the doctors uh, just looked at me and said, well, you, you don't have any big hope. You should change your life. And then uh, the tragedy with my wife, she got cancer in um, 2019 and died uh, in short, uh, after a short time. So that was a massive uh, change to me. and. Uh, that was the time when I really started to run long distance. And what did running mean to you during this really tough time? <clears throat> yeah, what I, uh, what I realized that, uh, yeah, that the running gave me extra energy. It was uh, kind of my medicine. Uh, it gave me mental strength. Uh, and especially after the uh, the death when uh, yeah you were there alone and uh, it was hard to understand your your feelings uh, it was good just to go out and run for hours and uh, not only could you feel physical pain but you could uh, understand the feelings that you got it was uh, it helped me a lot during that time so you used running a lot in like the, the grieving process it was the most important uh, kind of action that I took after that uh, that happened, and, uh, and that just showed uh, the power of uh, running and uh, the power to believe in yourself and uh, yeah, and be positive and uh, yeah, all that. In the last couple of years, Simon has shown that he is one of the absolute best in the world on the long ultra road races. And now, at the age of 47, he has become a professional runner. So how has that transition been, going from working a full-time full job, trying to say, find time for training, and now <laughs> being a professional runner, and this, is, this right now is your job? Yeah. No, I think that's, uh, of course, when I had the well-paid IT job in the oil industry. I had a lot of money and uh, no spare time. 
Now it's the opposite. A lot of time, but no money. So, yeah, it's about uh, not really surviving, but you have to uh, look into your spendage. It was not really about increasing my training, but increasing my uh, sleeping, reducing my stress level, and to, uh, to be more aware of yeah, your, not only your mental health, but to, to relax and uh, get more out of the training. You said it was two years ago since you went pro? Yes. But have you have, uh, had any regrets or no, you're happy? Not a single day. <laughs> so in some way I uh, yeah, I went pro when I was uh, at the age of 45. Yeah. So uh, perfect timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but better late than never. Yeah. <laughs> Right now we're running in about 420, 430 minutes per kilometer pace. Yeah. Is this like a common pace for you during your training runs or what is it? Well, uh, on these easy, easy days, I don't care anything. Uh, it really depends on uh, how your night was, if you're tired or stressed out or... So I just try to have a... Uh, uh, doesn't matter if it's uh, 5.30 or 4.30. It's just uh, get your legs moving and uh, have some fresh air. So you go a lot by feel and not, not stress out about the pace uh, you're running at? Yes, on, on these runs I'm, I'm not stressing. But when I'm doing kind of quality sessions, uh, interval and uh, tempo, then I'm really into uh, a specific pace. I have uh, three kind of quality sessions every week. Uh, on Monday I have a, kind of a, an interval. It could be four times ten kilometers, five times ten kilometers, where I start on uh, let's say 4.30 minute per kilometer and go down to 3.45. And then on Wednesday uh, I do a hill, a hill repeats. On my treadmill, I run half an hour on 5%, half an hour on zero, then half an hour on eight, and then I mix up and down. Total three hours. And on Friday, I try to have a long run, uh, either 40, 50, 60, uh, 70k on a given race pace. And in addition to that, I just fill up with the uh, I would not call it junk miles, but uh, miles where I'm running, I'm running to uh, meetings, I'm running when the kids are having soccer training, uh, I'm running to my uh, training uh, facility, and uh, just fill up with easy, easy miles. Okay, I have massive weeks up till 260 kilometers, but I'm also trying to relax and eat well, eat enough, and drink enough water, sleep enough and just have a focus to be uh, positive and not stress out. I think that's the, the key. My uh, philosophy is just have fun and, uh, and to fill up with a lot of uh, long uh, or semi-long slow running. Listen to good music and uh, being with friends. I think uh, it's that easy. Yeah, so, so now you're out running here with me, do you often run with companies or do you prefer running by yourself? Yeah, it's uh, when I'm uh, full-time running on daytime, it's a bit hard to uh, run with people. Yeah, yeah, of course. People seem to have this weird thing where they have to go someplace for eight hours. <laughs> yeah, that's strange. Uh, it was more uh, earlier, but uh, yeah, I miss that, run with people. So it's good that you're here. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> so you prefer, prefer that, but... But you say you listen to music when you're out this like massive mileage, this massive hours each week. Yeah. How do you do you just enjoy it or how do you make the time pass? <laughs> yeah, I really enjoy it. That's the, the time when I can listen to music and podcasts. So no, that's a really quality for me. Yeah. It's really, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's good for mental health and uh, and surviving as a human being. I guess there are days also for you where it's a bit tough to get out there. What, what kind of mindset do you have to, to motivate you? 
the mindset is that I want to break a certain record. I want to win Badwater, Spartathlon. So, so that's what motivates you. That is, you have to do it. You have to go the extra miles uh, if you're going to have a chance. So, so you set these really, really hard goals, and yeah. then, then that motivates you to, to put in the work that it uh, takes, basically. Yes, yeah. so uh, of course you want to be the, the best, and the, the best version of you, yeah. and then you just have to, you have to show up at work. You just two weeks ago ran this 24-hour race. And now you, to me at least, look look fresh. <laughs> Looks like you're running normally. It's a bit hot, actually. <laughs> it's a bit hot, actually. Yeah. We can see that Simon is running in in uh, shorts, and I'm running in in winter, pretty thick winter tights. Yeah. So we can we can <laughs> clearly see who's the real Viking of, <laughs> of us of us two. For me, like I ran a 50 kilometer ultra race uh, two months ago. And it's just like the last week or two <laughs> that my like Achilles and some other problems have uh, have stopped uh, hurting. So, wow. so how do you think you can manage recovering that quickly from these extreme uh, efforts? Yeah, well, last week, uh, first week after race, I didn't do anything. I was uh, totally uh, on the sofa and uh, went on the cabin with friends, had a lot of beer. Had a good time to kind of really, really mental uh, yeah change and uh, so this is the first week with running. Yeah, that's really interesting that you really have these both sides that you train extremely hard, but then you allow yourself to have a couple of beers and really relax after yes. a race. For someone like like me who is on a lot lower level yeah. <laughs> than you and are pretty new to like the world of ultra running. What tips do you have to someone like starting out uh, wanting to try out uh, different ultra distances? Yeah, I think uh, first of all, uh, just uh, run uh, a lot, uh, slow um, tempo, just have fun. And gradually you will just build up more, uh, more strength to, to running. Uh, and okay, in the future, just uh, book a race. Put a date, let's say next year I'm going to run 100k and then just do it. So last year we won this really prestigious ultra race called the Badwater 135. Yep, correct. And uh, well, that, that was so fascinating and so cool for me to see because one of the toughest parts of that race, as I understand it, is the like, extreme heat because it takes place in Death Valley. Yeah. And how do you prepare for that? Because and I, I, like, I think it's pretty cold here. You're running in shorts, but I can promise you it's, it's not that warm here in, no, in it's, Norway. It's a bit freezing. So how do you prepare for um, such an extreme heat in a race like that? Yeah, the first thing I did was to, uh, to buy an infrared sauna. So I did a sauna at home before, uh, well, in front of my television, more or less every day before that race. And then I had uh, two training camps in Dubai. And I also did a um, kind of a sweat test with a company called uh, Precision Fuel and Hydration, where they measured my sweat rate and, uh, and made sure that I had all my hydration in place. So that's kind of crucial to make sure that you're yeah, on the correct sodium level and hydration and energy. That's the basic when running in. Uh, in hot weather. You really seem to have this like analytic mindset and always see what you can improve to the next race. Yes. Where do you think that comes from that you like you always are looking for improvement? Well I think that may be my background uh, with a master degree in, uh, in IT and science. So I'm really analytical based and I think on every race there are something to learn. So I try to write up lessons learned try to discuss with my crew, with my team and coach what, uh, what can we improve and what are, the, what are the mistakes, what are the good things. Write up a list and, uh, yeah, and try to share and to improve for every race. Yeah. That's important. I think you can always uh, improve 
on something. If it's maybe your shoes or your uh, setup, your gear, everything. There are always some uh, percentage you can uh, improve. Yeah, yeah so I, I've talked earlier in this video that, that I thought it should almost be impossible to do what, what uh, you have done. If you like boil it down, what do you think is the main reason why you became one of the best uh, ultramarathon runners in the world? I think what I'm good at is to uh, do it, uh, okay? to, um, to dream, kind of dream big. I think everyone is possible to achieve kind of whatever you want. So the major step of that was, uh, okay, I quit my job. That is not something people normally do. Uh, I aim sky high. Uh, and and I made a good plan. I, uh, I have uh, good companies that I trust, have a good coach. I nailed down the nutrition, all the gear. So to be able to be the best, I think it has to come from, from inside yourself. Uh, you have to want it. Um, and you have to really, really believe that you can do it. And then you have to understand that uh, there's a lot of hard work. When I traveled to Stavanger, I was mostly eager to learn about the training Simon does that allows him to do almost impossible things with his running. But after spending some time with him, what really stood out to me and inspired me a lot was his mindset and overall outlook on life. Having a relaxed mindset, staying positive, while still always striving for improvement and being the best version of himself. So, Simon, we have ran 13 uh, kilometers. Okay. Thanks for a really nice run, and it was so nice meeting you and learning more uh, about you. I think many people can get inspired by you and and, uh, and your story. Thank of you. course, if you want to learn more about Simon, I will link all of his social channels in the description to this video. Yeah. So, thanks, Simon. Thank I wish you the best of luck in all your races. Thank you, and sorry this was uh, a bit longer than... Uh, uh, it was perfect for me. I need to start <laughs> training more. <so. laughs>